Hey everyone, Coach Michelle here from DeSales University Volleyball. Um, I wanted to put together this screencast to help you work on your stat keeping um, for collegiate volleyball matches. We're going to show you three video clips of my team playing and give you the opportunity to write down the stats that occurred during those video clips. So before we get started, uh, you're going to need a blank piece of paper or you can use the blank copy of the NCAA stat sheet and you'll also need a pencil. You're going to record the stats based on the individual completing that action. So you're also going to need to record uh, the number of the player that's, record that's performing the action. Um, before each video clip, I will give you the numbers of the six girls that are on the court at the time. And remember, you will only be recording the stats of the DeSales team. So our first clip, uh, DeSales is on the close side of our court. Um, the players that are in my back row are going to be number 11, number 13, and number 2. And the players that are in the front row are number 9, number 8, and number 10. Remember that you are only recording stats for DeSales. Ready? All right, let's go. All right, there's the clip, so let's review. Here's what you should have recorded. You should have recorded a serve attempt for number 11, and then attack attempt for number 9, followed by a kill for number 9, with, a, with an assist going to number 13. Check your paperwork, see if you have that, and let's also check where you could have possibly gone wrong. In the middle of the play, uh, number two passes a ball, and many of you could have recorded that as a dig. Um, the reason that it was not a dig was because it was not attacked from the other team. Uh, it was just sent over as a forearm pass from the other team, so that doesn't count as an attack. Therefore, it won't get recorded as a dig for our team. Another spot that you could have uh, taken a misstep would have been that every kill also needs an attack attempt. Some people would just have recorded a kill for number nine without putting the fact that she had the attack attempt as well. Um, that's an important uh, thing to remember, especially when it comes to determining hitting percentage for that player. We want to make sure that they always have an attack attempt, and that attack attempt um, then would be followed by the kill stat. All right, our second clip. Again, DeSales is on the close side of the court. Uh, the players in the back row are, all, again, number 11, number 13, and number 2. The players in the front row are number 9, number 8, and number 10. Again, remember that you are recording stats for DeSales only. Uh, and let's go. Remember, you can always pause the screencast at any time and review the clip. Uh, that was a little bit of a longer rally. Uh, so you can take this back, watch the clip again, make sure that you've got everything down, and we're going to go into our review now. Here's what you should have recorded. You should have recorded a serve attempt for number 11, and then a dig for number 8, an attack attempt for number 10, a dig for number 11, and an attack attempt for number 10, and then that should have ended your play. So how did you do? Where you could have possibly gone wrong, uh, you may have missed the dig for number 11. Just like in the last clip, uh, it wasn't necessarily an overhand uh, attack from the team, uh, but this time it would be considered a dig for, for DeSales because the opposing team uh, pushed the ball overhand, which would count as an attack for them. You can get, you remember, you get a dig when the team um, aggressively attacks the ball um, to our side of the court, which that push from the opposing team counts as an aggressive attack, so that would be a dig for number 11. It is hard to open, to end the play on an open stat of having the attack attempt. 
technically being the open stat. There is no kill uh, to follow that um, for our own team. But you have to remember that it is okay to do so uh, because the play actually ended on an opposing team's error. So when you put the whole box score together, um, you're going to have that in there, that the opposing team had an error on that play, uh, which would come from their, their statistician. Uh, so that would be where it would be okay for us to end our play on an attack attempt. And our last clip, again DeSales is on the close side of the court. The players in the back row are number 11, number 13, and number 2. The players in our front row are number 9, number 8, and number 10. Again, remember you are recording the stats for DeSales only. And here's the start of the clip. That was a quick rally, um, but again, if you want to go back and review the clip, please feel free to pause the screencast, um, go back, take a look at the clip again, um, and before you get to our review, but we are going to head into the review right now, here's what you should have recorded. A serve attempt for number 11, and then you have a block assist for number 9, and a block assist for number 8. So how did you do during that rally, which was a short rally? Uh, it, you could have gone wrong in pretty much only one spot, um, and this is important to know. You may have counted the block as a solo block for number nine. Clearly in the video, um, you can see it if you watch it back again, if you missed it, she was the player um, who blocked the ball. Uh, number eight had n did not have any contact with the ball in the play. Um, so t sometimes you want to take that and say, well, number nine blocked the ball. Number nine gets a solo block. And, and there also was a hole in the block. Uh, but one thing to remember was that number eight was in the prep, in her proper position for blocking. She also jumped at the same time as number nine, uh, and that's because of that reason. Um, it would be counted as a block assist for both players. So both players would earn a stat on the end of that play. Um, great job. Thank you for, for watching along with the screencast, for taking part in um, the, this little activity, uh, making sure that you're keeping up on your stat keeping. Remember, you can always watch the film back if you miss something. Uh, start to become familiar with watching the play and memorizing the actions. A lot of good statisticians record the actions once the play has ended. Any questions, remember, always just let me know. Send me an email, stop in my office. And thanks again for watching our screencast on the proper techniques of stat keeping.